Good evening, everybody. This is Dave from the Tiki Bar Online. We're here on a uh, casual Thursday uh, here at Burns uh, Tobacconist in Chattanooga, Tennessee, wearing our PJs and smoking puros. So uh, today we are here with Mr. Gary Griffith from Emilio Cigars. The uh, I call him the mad scientist um, because of all his talk about chemistry, um, which is something you don't hear a lot of in the uh, cigar field. Um, I'm not going to ask you to reveal any trade secrets or uh, anything like that. We know you've got some new things uh, coming up your sleeve, uh, coming out from up your sleeve here pretty soon. Uh, Play field. Um, uh, Grimalkin uh, replacement La Musa is La Musa? Coming, in, coming out very soon. Um, but we're just going to talk tobacco, I think, and, and, and Emilio cigars. So for those, for those that don't know you, don't know your story, how did you get into doing cigars? I started uh, about 10 years ago managing, I sold my construction business and retired. And I, uh, just for giggles, I went to work at the local cigar shop for something to do because I love cigars. Got me out of the house for, you know, 15, 20 hours a week. And uh, after about a year, I realized a lot of stuff they were not doing as well as I thought they could do. Good. So I started making some changes and uh, began to grow the chain and long story short today it's now a 24 store chain of stores. You started with one store? Started with two. Two. Uh, Up to 24 stores. There's right? now 24 and uh, I just uh, over the course of being involved in that and being involved in the industry and, and going to the trade shows and having people come in for events I met a lot of really wonderful people and several years ago, got invited to go to my first trip to Central America. Nice. And uh, it was on that trip that uh, I played around a lot with tobacco and and uh, learned a lot from the folks that were were there, who are very generous with their time. And that was the trip on which I uh, blended the cigar you're currently smoking. And for those of you who haven't uh, had this one, I'm gonna. Put this up here so that we can get a picture of it. This is the Emilio Series H. This is the Maduro version. There is also a Sumatra version. <clears throat> but uh, I've had both. And I really prefer this Maduro. It's really good. Um, a lot of you have probably tried the AF1, the AF2, and the Grimalkin. And you may not have even heard of the, uh, the Series H. Uh, because it's not as carried in as many stores at this point, but if you get a chance, try these. They are excellent. Thank you. So, back to you. The, uh, so the following year, I had the opportunity to go make my first trip to Nicaragua, and uh, it just worked out really well that I got to, to go into several factories and uh, see how different the operations were and uh, I was all, I've always been that kind of annoying guy that just doesn't follow <laughs> the normal uh, tour routine. I'm the guy that always hangs back and asks a lot more questions. We had one of those on the last tour I was on. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the very next month, um, I got invited to uh, go again to Nicaragua and went and uh, for the first time went to A.J. Fernandez's factory. Mm. And we were taking a tour through uh, some of the tobacco he has. He's accumulated a lot of tobacco and he was speaking at length about uh, something he had accomplished with a particular tobacco and of course my background is in chemistry and these things always intrigue me. Okay. So a few other folks on the tour kind of poo-pooed the idea of that that wasn't possible by traditional <laughs> w wisdom and I bothered to think about it for about five minutes and turned around and looked at him again and said this is what you did isn't it and he walked over and put his hand on my shoulder and he said uh, you know your tobacco how come you don't make cigars <laughs> and uh, on that flight home I just uh, it stunned me that somebody of that caliber yeah. would say something like that so I made the decision that I was going to make cigars and uh, went back again, met with AJ. Uh, after several trips, we'd come up with uh, a blend for the uh, AF1 Maduro uh, that uh, really suited me. 
and we put it into production and of course last year we began introducing product mm -hmm. um, I've spent a lot of time on all my trips learning as much as I can so that I I make the best possible decisions up front so that we don't have a really long drawn out process uh, trying to come up with new blends and it's just evolved from there and it's uh, you know I love the industry it's full of great people uh, they're very generous and, and sharing their knowledge and uh, it's just the industry fascinates me and I, yeah. I just want to be part of it. Well, that is uh, uh, definitely a, uh, a great second career absolutely. Uh, to get into. Absolutely. Um, when I grow up I want to be like you. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I think it's it's really interesting the, the the stuff you've told me, the things that Nate has related to me about. Your, I think my favorite quote that he said was, "It's it's only molecules." Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I think sometimes, of course, and and I I put it that way. It's it's obviously a, a bit more than that, but it is processing tobacco is just chemistry. Right. And you no, know, and, and this is a different approach than pretty much anyone else has yeah to the to the industry um, but the, the other thing is too a lot of my blends don't derive in a traditional way I mean from, from what obviously I've done my own thing and my time has been spent doing my own thing but from what I've observed of other folks they'll have a tendency to to go to a manufacturer and, and say you know I want to make a cigar like this mm -hmm. and then what you're doing, in my view at least, is constraining yourself from the beginning because that particular ma manufacturer may not have access to the tobaccos that will allow you to accomplish that okay. as completely as you would like to. So everything you produce can potentially, I'm not saying it is, but can potentially end up being a compromise. Right. As, so it's as close as you can get to what you wanted. What I, the sense. way I like to work is play with the inventories of tobaccos that a manufacturer has, find a tobacco that I really fall in love with, and then utilizing the rest of what he has available, develop a blend that gives me the best possible thing I can produce in that factory. Okay. And that's just the way I like to work. It's just, you know, I'm more comfortable with it that way. I'm, and I'm not saying one way's right or one way's wrong. They're, they're just different and it's, it works best for me then that's the most important thing is what what works best for you uh, and uh, I think it's great that you're bringing a, a new mindset to it um, if everyone goes into it with the same mindset how many possible outcomes can there uh, really be um, so yeah and I don't I don't think you know we should stray away from playing around with doing things in ways that are just not traditionally done you know uh, the new cigar in the AF series that's going to come out shortly. Um, I actually decided to do that and never intended to produce a Connecticut cigar because I don't smoke mild cigars. Mm -hmm. But we're sitting at the Los Arcos Hotel in Esteli, Nicaragua one night having dinner and uh, during the course of the conversation um, I just jokingly said to a group of uh, folks that were there, you know, well, maybe I will do a, a <laughs> real mild, smooth Connecticut. And uh, the guy says, well, you can't work in Nicaragua then, because you can't do it in Nicaragua. <laughs> and I thought to myself, well, why can't you? I, there's no reason. Exactly. There's but, a lot of Connecticut's out lot, now that have Nicaraguan exactly. tobacco in them. And, but, but, you know, with s certain people, they just have this, this mentality that, you know, you've got to go to the Dominican Republic to make a mild cigar. We're long past that. The tobaccos travel from country to country to country oh, now. You know, all the manufacturers are bringing in tobaccos from various countries. And the exciting thing is, you know, every time I go to Central America and I look at the tobaccos that are available, there's more and more tobacco coming from new regions or, or new seed types being grown right. in regions where they traditionally weren't done. And again, it all comes down to chemistry. Right. Just like with wines, just like with, with doing fine wines, the soils and climate are going to impact the flavors. Absolutely. And so to me it's really cool that, you know, if somebody says to me, you know, this particular farm at this particular location in this country is growing this seed strain that wasn't normally ever grown there, 
And sometimes you pick up a handful of that kind of tobacco and you put it up to your nose and you go, oh my God, I gotta work with this. <laughs> and that's the way I like to start. <clears throat> well, I guess that's definitely a different uh, method to the madness. Um, so this is the new AF you're talking about is the Suave? AF Suave. Um, smooth. Smooth, yeah. As opposed to Rico Suave, which is uh, rich and smooth. Rich and smooth, the, yeah. the old. Uh, the old uh, one-hit wonder song from the early 90s. Yeah, but uh, and there, there's some more stuff coming. I, I just uh, finished doing test blends in a new factory um, two trips ago, um, and I'm real excited uh, to be working there because it's a, uh, a, a dear long, long time friend who has just given me a lot of education and a lot of knowledge over the years and been very willing to share uh, so I'm excited to, to be working there um, as we make the transition from Grimalkin to the rebranding mm -hmm. of Lamusa. That uh, that original Grimalkin will remain as as uh, just Lamusa. Right. But the next uh, blend in that series is complete and going into production. Oh, fantastic! And should be released by the time of the trade show. Okay. And that will be Lamusa Melete, and. Uh, this is where I pay a compliment to my national sales director. <laughs> we, we've come to work so well together that we almost read each other's minds. And uh, the morning I made the decision um, to change the branding on that cigar, and uh, you're familiar with the story of what I do with that cigar, it, it's very important to me, and, and I, I use um, that cigar to, uh, to fund the education of, of someone that's very important to me. Um, and I'd always referred to her as my little muse. But I'd chosen the Grimalkin name because just over the years I'd liked that name. It is a cool name. And it is a cool name. But it's hard to explain to everybody. Exactly. <laughs> and, and so I wrote a piece on my blog and I said, I'm going to make this change. And uh, a guy that interacts with me a lot on Twitter came back within minutes and responded to the blog post. And he said, well, why don't you change it to the muse? That's who you're always talking about anyway. Nice. And it just struck me that that is a fabulous idea. So I called Nathan early in the morning and, <laughs> and said, I'm changing it and here's what the name is gonna be. And his response was, give me 20 minutes, I gotta get off the phone. <laughs> and 20 minutes later, almost in a second, I had an email and of course he st st studied theology in school. Right. Um, and he had to learn you know, ancient Greek history and the ancient Greek languages. And within 20 minutes, I had an email back that sketched out the entire branding of the entire four blends that will appear in that line. Wow. All based on the original Plutarchian muses. Oh no. <laughs> all, all using their exact names in the Greek format and the whole <laughs> nine, and I just thought, that is such a fabulous idea. Oh wow, and Nate is, uh, Nate is a Nate is a uh, insane worker bee. Oh, I'll he? tell you what, I'll tell you what, he's great. He's really, really been an asset. And uh, like I say, we, we do work so well together that, that it's just, it's, it really is a delight. He's yes. just, you know, he, and his, his heart is in it. Yes. And I think the best thing I ever did for him a couple months ago was I took him on his first trip to a cigar factory. Yeah, he was, he was really excited about that, I know. He was on fire coming back. He yes. was, and, and, and you know, I, uh, I've begun to do this now. I, I think I'm gonna make it a requirement that uh, that before I permanently settle on anybody, they got to they got to take a tour, tour to a factory with me, oh, okay. and see how I work and understand how I work, um, and also allow me the opportunity to see um, whether they're a fit for us. Okay. Uh, whether they really have the fire in their belly, whether they really have the passion for the tobacco, and whether they're really inspired by that phenomenal depth of knowledge and that that enormous work ethic that the people that run and work in these factories have and if they can't be inspired by that if they can't go to Esteli Nicaragua and come back on oh my god those people are fabulous they, they they're not going to fit with us all right well that uh, <coughs> 
That is uh, putting all the uh, sales reps for Emilio on notice. On notice, yeah. uh, You need to really get your game up when you get that call yeah. that you're you're going to be taking a trip. Yeah, you get, need to get your game on. Get your passport ready. <laughs> and but uh, I think by you know by, by no, and large I, the people yeah. we have are great people and no, they've, they they've done well for us. And I, I would just like them to have that additional experience because I think it imparts so much. Right. Uh, it absolutely. I mean, I I've, I've been. Um, uh, a uh, blessed with uh, being a recipient of two trips to Dominican Republic and the amount of stuff I learned yes there was some party time uh, but the amount of stuff I learned was phenomenal mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know the the fact that I learned that I really cannot roll a cigar uh, <laughs> I know this now I'll send my 17 year old daughter to teach <laughs> <Yeah>. you <laughs> I really can't do this and you know I'm okay with that because this girl who uh, has been working in the factory for 14 years, who did end up rolling all the wrappers on my cigars, she did a great job. And in and, and seeing how hard all of these people work, and, I, and I'm talking from the factory head all the way down to the people uh, sitting at the tables uh, in various places around the factory, working their butts off all day long, they, they, there's a massive amount of hard work put into this. A lot of hard work, and they love what they're doing. Yes. And they take enormous pride in it. And this is something that, that's close to my heart. You know, when, when, I, when I hear a consumer say, you know, oh, that cigar is X dollars, and that's too much for that, unless they've ever been to a cigar factory, they yeah. have no right to make that statement. Because it, it's they have, surprising. They have no basis to make it on. It, it, and anybody I've ever taken to a cigar factory comes away with that, oh, my God. They're worth every penny. How how do they sell these so cheap? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I mean, you know, when there are uh, dozens of hands that uh, work these tobaccos from the field all the way through the box, um, it, it's it's amazing how they can sell them as cheaply as they do. Yeah, yeah. Um, and when you figure in any given production, uh, you know, you've probably got. I mean, I've never officially tallied it, but there's you know there's an apocryphal number that runs around the in industry, and it strikes me as you know, based on my experience, probably relatively accurate, you know, there's probably 300 steps yeah. in the process. Yeah. And it, it's just astounding. Name them all. I'm yeah. just kidding. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Can, can, I, can I just say the ABC's backwards? That'll yeah, be easier. Yeah, no kidding. Huh? Um, and name all the state capitals. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, we're gonna we're gonna break here, um, and um, and I'm gonna get uh, the new uh, Emilio Cigars director of sales out here uh, to uh, talk for a couple of minutes. Uh, I do want to thank Gary for being here with us this evening. Certainly welcome, thank and, you. Um, and and uh, let you know that uh, he will be back in Chattanooga on August 24th, 25th for the second annual Chattanooga Tweet Up, and hope you can all be there. And that's it for now. All right, all right, thank you. Thank you.